Farm and Pigs is a staple of the Don't Starve universe, at least in my book. It's why my third overall guide within this series covered the mass murdering of our Porky Companions over a year ago. And to this day, I still get people who want to know about it and just praise its benefit. So, just like how we return to tall birds and farm and those things, I think we should talk big meat and pink butts. And honestly, the best part about constructing potential pig farms is just how frickin' easy they can be. Heck, the world could very well give you everything you need itself. All we must do is root these humanoid swines from their homes while out and about and in and around the fat man himself in the surrounding birch biomes of the world, which should honestly host a lot of them for ya, the thick forests of the constant, which surprisingly are also going to see a great number of pigmen around, or perhaps just the plain old simple plains if one of these lonely guys happen to spawn away from the rest of them. And just FYI, every two houses smashed and grabbed equals one craft for you, so evict every pig you see to make life as easy as possible. But before we construct the new pig row, we must lay the bait, make a small enclosure, and either drop a butt, cause we all know how much pigmen love their friends and family's behinds, or better yet, a piece of raw to help keep them busy. Oh, and I would plan accordingly with flingos and lightning rods at the ready if I was you. Then, begin the lay down pork central by building and placing the pig houses around this pen of ours. The pigmen will be so enthralled by the prospect of filling their tummies that they'll just continuously run their faces into these walls uncontrollably. My friends, they'll be so infatuated that even come dusk, these little piggies are not running all the way home. And heck, they'll even stay out at night time. Now, with this in mind, we can talk what this farm truly entails. Wait till the glow of a full moon, watch as dozens of innocent piggies transform to butt-hungry beasts of furriness, and have your way with them. Sure, your sanity is likely gonna be knackered, and chances are you'll take a hit or two if you choose not to kite each one individually or just forget how many hits it takes to kill them. But everywhere pig deadzo means too big meat and a pig butt for your pleasure. That's a ham bat craft per kill. Plus, you can use the loot to make more huts. The farm is one of the easiest to construct, simplest to manage, and still provides amazing efficiency when needed. Because, yes, the downside is it really only operates during full moons and pigs respawn every four days anyways. My advice? Try to pick up the loot from each kill before switching targets to maximize potential. But even with those time constraints in mind, simply just having one of these farms at the ready can truly make a difference every few days. But Beard, we must ask again. Why'd you come back to the pig farm idea if you just literally showed us what you've already showed us? Well, it's once again to direct our attention to new mechanics that were just not feasible back when we made the original guide. And those are the deadly catapults. I'll admit that the sanity loss from all those werepigs could very well spell potential disaster for some out there, while the potential to lose some health per werepig could be even worse for most. But I do see that they've kinda tweaked how werepigs target you now. But how do we still go about mitigating that possibility? Well, by just eliminating having to do the killing ourselves. Perhaps entrap the pigs in a corner, bait them plenty distance from their huts, use proper walls or structures, then watch as the rocks fly and pigs die. It's truly a thing of beauty. But spacing is high priority in this one, folks. You don't want your catapults ruining your huts. But just as I wish to add to our past, I yearn to revisit more of it. There is another gimmicky but fun pig farm out there that actually has been showcased on this channel prior but did not get the proper love it deserved. 
the ghost method. It is very simple, except it's not. For you see, it revolves around the idea of utilizing Maxwell's graveyard. Only Maxwell's graveyard is a set piece. And as we know, set pieces ain't always there per world. Plus, this bloody thing can spawn just about anywhere it freaking wants to, which doesn't help. If you do get one and wish to take part in something unique, then constructing is quite easy actually, because all that is needed are the very materials that we've already been discussing in the previous methods. Build a border around the dead, put up as many houses in and around the graveyard as possible, obviously with more the merrier, clear whatever structures will be in your way, and there's probably going to be a lot, and make sure to have that bait at the ready to entice them suckers. Now, all we gotta do is wait. Same full moon night, spooky difference. Be sure to initially stand a little ways away from the dead rising because you don't want them on your behind, but then sit back and watch as the carnage unfolds. The ghosts will melt right through the armada of werepigs with ease. All the while, the pigs just refuse to fight back or heck, even notice what the heck is happening to them and their family around them. This not only keeps you very safe and sound, it prevents you from having to kill any of them yourself once again, but secures 100% of the loot for your pleasure. Is it worth it? It's debatable. But come on now, if you got the set piece, why not just give it a whirl for fun? That's kind of the point. Also, ain't no one telling you that you can't just have multiple pick farms to begin with. But there you have it, everyone. A return to a classic. And just like that, we got ourselves a lovely barbecue to top it all off. I have always, always loved some pick farms, and I am happy to have not only begun my journey with them, but also have the opportunity to reminisce with you all now. Have fun committing some porky genocide yourself, friends. Thanks for watching, well wishes to all, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.